each session is going to be better um, if I have engagement from you uh, along with the things we're going to share tonight. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about branding. Um, our topic is branding yourself, um, the concept of us being uh, a personal brand. So let's go ahead and get going here. So we're going to start off with a little interaction up front. So what percent of employers use social media to screen candidates? What do you guys think? There should be a poll popping up on your screen here. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? I think right. high, 95, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we got uh, a lot of different answers here. Oh, wow. Got 95 winning 70. Oh, 70 is taking the lead. Let's <laughs> see who's. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, oh, we got the results here. So um, the overwhelming um, choice from the group tonight was 70%. That's 54% of us um, selected 70%. Let's see if that's the correct answer. Yay, 70%. Um, <laughs> <I love. laughs> Does that, does that figure uh, surprise anyone? No. No. Yes. No. Does it, what does it, just when you see, when you see that figure, 70% employers use social media to screen candidates, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel like surprised, but yet unsurprised okay. at the same time. Okay, makes you feel surprised anyone else what how does it make you feel when you see when you read that 70 percent of employers use social media to screen candidates it makes me feel like i need to um straighten up my uh instagram and facebook <laughs> great great yeah. observations <laughs> uh, i must say um it really shows that your social media is valuable, more valuable than we may think. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So let's, let's use a bit of that. So just three of them that I wrote down was surprise. I makes me want to straighten up my social media and social media uh, is valuable. So let's, let's transition here. So with COVID-19, um, COVID-19 and if we look at it from, let's, let's take away from the academia world and what we're going through personally. Let's just look at it as a whole. People who are stepping up or people who are reacting slowly, their personal brands are gaining traction or taking a hit. Do you guys agree with that publicly right now? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kind yes. of. So, and it's, and it's true. Like if you look at the, if you look at the media, right, it doesn't mean what you, what you think is the fact or fiction, you know, that's not what, that's not what a brand is. What a brand is, is perception. Everything is about perception. So certain governors and things like that, that are seen as being very responsive and all this, they are building, they, during this COVID-19, they can be seen as a, a person who is building their brand, being a person of the people type of thing. So the same thing for you guys right now. We're dealing with hardships. There are challenges going on in the world right now, but you have an opportunity through COVID-19 to still build a brand. You still have a chance to enhance your professional profile. So for those that may have had their summers interrupted, what are some of the things you can still do in order to build your professional profile. Who, after they're getting off of these Wednesday night calls, are going onto their social media, sharing some of the tips that they learn, sharing some of the feedback on LinkedIn, letting people know they're engaged, who on social media right now or on their resume is uh, identifying, yes, I may not have been able to do that research that I typically do over the summer. I may not be able to do that internship that I was gonna do this summer but I'm actually enrolled in a 10 week 
uh, professional development STEM um, summer educational series. Anybody thought that joining on Wednesday night is actually something that you can be putting as an educational material for your resume? Well, yeah, because if you're in WISC camp or whatever the alternative to WISC camp is for other states, they're in the sort of the same branch. So that's something you can put on your resume. Yeah, yeah so I never thought about that, but right now I'm excited. I'm going to put it there. It's going to add something to my resume. <laughs> Yeah, or even if you're on LinkedIn and you're you're trying to figure out, okay, you know, I don't want to just post random stuff on LinkedIn. What about some of the topics that we've discussed so far? What are some about some of the future topics that are coming up? What about encouraging other LSAM students to join in? Now you are you're becoming an influential person in the midst of um, a little bit of chaos in the world. You actually are becoming an influential person. Hey, five or 10 people join the call next week because on LinkedIn, you let them know that you're enjoying what's taking place on Wednesday night with your educational experience. So though it, it seems abnormal, that's the whole point because in the personal brand space, we are trying to differentiate ourselves from others. So let's progress through that. So let's look at these brands real quick. So are these brands stand out, you know, they stand out very, very well in your eyes. Everybody pretty much knows, know what these brands are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't, it takes your brain pretty much not a whole lot of thought to even recognize what these are, right? Yes. Does anybody, does anybody um, own or or like, um, and I'm gonna get this correct because my wife is from the Chicago area. Um, I always say Michael Jordans. I think they're called Jordans. Does anybody like like Jordan shoes? I love them. I do. Love yeah. them. Look at that. Oh my gosh! Look at the response. Look at the emotional response. Oh. Who was that that said they loved it? Sharice. <laughs> Sharice, talk to me, Sharice. How? Because you—that was a true, genuine, emotional response. <laughs> how did that? How? What do those Jordan? How do they make you feel? Why do you like them so much? They just look nice, and then when you get a nice outfit on and you go out, people compliment you on your shoes. All right, you said. Yep, that shoe game's gonna be on point. They look nice, make you feel good. Um, and then you get some compliments. Okay, um, McDonald's. Who likes? And I'm I'm just gonna be transparent. Who likes some McDonald's French fries, hot off the grease? I do. I do. Oh, I do. Oh. I do. I do. It's, it's hard. It's hard to compete with that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is yeah. something about that fresh French fry. <laughs> <laughs> I always ask them to make me some fresh ones. <laughs> how do how how do they make you feel? What is what is that emotional response for someone when they get that that fresh batch of French fries? I would dance. <laughs> what was that answer? I start dancing when I eat French fries. Oh first. my gosh! <laughs> Not feeling that. <laughs> Makes you dance. Oh my gosh! I love it. <laughs> it gives me joy. Joy. <laughs> I've never started dancing <laughs> eating French fries, but I swear uh, I would dance in the car <laughs> while eating. I think my, my soul dances a little bit when I eat them, but I never physically dance. <laughs> okay, so uh, last but not least, <laughs> who loves Chipotle? I do. Fantastic. <laughs> Just fantastic. I do. I do. That is some good food. Good food. <laughs> fantastic fantastic so who, who who was that is that um um I, I was trying to figure out who i thought the voice recognized on the on the who said fantastic it is me ibrahim Ibrahim. all right <laughs> yes what just tell me tell me about that that experience when yes, you get that bowl or that yes. burrito something especially for uh chipotle is that uh when i eat it it uh, it tastes like an organic product like nowadays most of uh, I, I do like McDonald's don't get me wrong but fast food most of fast food 
they don't have a test of organic food, which is have a good test and have a good, uh, like healthy products on it. Okay. Okay. So you're getting a good tasting product and you feel, you, you kind of feel good about it a little bit after you eat it. Yes. Okay. Anybody else on the Chipotle? I know Chipotle hits a, hits an emotional, uh, nerve with, with so many people. Does anybody, does anybody um, like me enjoy just going into the store and, and kind of seeing it made, your, your bowl or yep. your burrito being made? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that experience when you, when you see that Chipotle sign and your experience in line. It feels like you can trust, like there's a sense of trust. Oh, wow. What a powerful Almost like word. a home-cooked meal for you. It's Almost. dependable. It's reliable. Wow. So, so we had some fun with this, right? We had the Jordan and the McDonald's and the Chipotle. So if I were to put your brand up here, what would it say? And that's something I want you guys to think about. And maybe if you have notes and paper, we have some reflection questions at the end. But if you just want to write it down right now to help help generate some, some thinking throughout the night. Maybe just write down, what does, what does my brand say about me? What does my brand represent? So if I go backwards, let's go back here. And you see my brand right there. So this is, this is a lesson learned on the spot, right? We're, we're learning a, a live lesson. So let's actually, let's do this. Let's go to this one. So share with me, those that have maybe had a chance to be on the last few calls or so, what does my brand represent to you? How, how do you perceive my brand? It looks very open. Okay, open. Does that is that also kind of does it mean welcoming? Yes. Okay, very welcoming. Gotcha. I get like the sense of uh, well connectedness because you have all your links up. Okay, you're connected. Familiar. Familiar. No, not well. well I don't want to like a friend, like, like a so, like I'm your like I can be your your buddy or something. Yeah, like your friend. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. Organized. Very well kept. Organized. Well kept. Gotcha. So I'm going to get off of me because I don't want someone to start saying all the bad stuff. Let's end on the good stuff there. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I wanted to do that because this is part of personal brand management. I have absolutely no control of the way in which you are going to perceive me. What I do have control over is what I can project about me. I can be timely. I can be consistent. I can show versatility in the ability to teach students. So those are things that I can project to you. You then, I hope, if I project it a certain way and I'm consistent and it's repeatable, that hopefully you can receive it in the way that I intend it and that you can perceive me the way in which I intended. So this is why not only putting your brand out is important and personalizing it for yourself is important because if you don't brand yourself, someone will brand you. There is going to be an opinion about you if you like it or not. The question is, will you be the one that controls the narrative? So let's move forward with this. So, Seven, what do you think that seven represents in the form of personal branding? Throw out a, just throw out a random answer. Seven days of the week. Seven days of the week. Maybe it's recommended out seven out of seven people recommend this service or something like that. We're getting, we're getting colder now. <laughs> We're getting colder. Is it lucky? Seven is a lucky number. 
Well, I do like the number seven. Seven's not a bad number. But no, what this seven represents, guys, seven seconds to make a first impression. Seven seconds. So within seven seconds, think about this. Let's go back to our classrooms. We're on a college campus. Um, you get to class a few minutes early, and then all of a sudden people start walking in. Within seconds, aren't you already analyzing that person every time they walk in? You look at their clothes, you look at their hair, you look at their tall, what kind of shoes they have on, right? Mm -hmm. And we're doing that within split seconds. Now, we do that to others within seven seconds, and then the world does that to us. So every opportunity that you have to have an interaction, know that within seven seconds, that person is already making their first impression about you. So your brand not only is a social brand, a LinkedIn and a resume and all of these things, but it's also about how they experience a personal interaction with you within seven seconds and then also your online presence within seven seconds. So if you were to go to my LinkedIn profile, within seven seconds, you are developing an opinion about me, even though you never spoke to me. So that's why when we're looking at these social media platforms, when you're looking at your resume, you guys may have a website, you may have a business card. When we're looking at these things, we need something that captures the eye and gives a quick synopsis of who we might be within seven seconds. What does that mean to you guys when, when you hear me kind of explain it that way? You can raise your hand if you like. Uh, first person that wants to speak up, you can, and then others can raise their hand. All right, uh, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Um, so I think that the seven seconds thing just shows how important it is to show, to like, give off the most important parts of yourself immediately rather than like later because you only have seven seconds to make that first impression. Absolutely. And from a social media standpoint, I think um, where this resonates with me from even, you know, when I say social media, this includes LinkedIn or your Instagrams, et cetera, is in your titles, in your heading. If you go to my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, my main page, it quickly is going to grab you. It has certain things. I have a little, you know, there are certain strong, powerful words. From a resume standpoint, how do you have your resume uh, structured in a way that takes your gravitates a person eye to some of the key things that you want them to see. That was one more. Was there someone else that wanted to speak on that? Um, uh, Sharice? So I just had a question. You said strong, powerful words. Can you give us some examples of those? Um, you know what? Um, so for instance, for me, um, you may see on my social media, you may see something that says, uh, career counselor, um, uh, career um, expert, career development expert, um, uh, STEM. I think like my Instagram has like a STEM with a heart, um, you know, STEM lover. So it's just type of things like that that are just standing out. Now on a resume, we're going to have something more, you know, and this is a different, a different uh, Wednesday night lesson, but on a resume, I may have a lot of action verbs. So you want to make sure that in the body of your resume, especially when you're talking about your experience, you're going to have words like developed, created, implemented. Those mean that you put something into action. And so we want a very strong action verbs. Same thing on your LinkedIn profile. You want strong action verbs leading into explaining uh, the, the, the body of your, your, your LinkedIn as well. And also, um, you know, part of seven seconds is just looking at the pictures, guys. A good, a good photo. And a good photo doesn't mean, you know, like you're trying to be some uh, fancy Instagram person, but it just means that you put a good, a good picture, a, a good photo that has good lighting, maybe a nice background or whatever the case may be. 
that hit home with anybody? It makes, do you feel like just, just talking about the seven seconds makes you want to make maybe some adjustments to the heading of some of your social media platforms? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you got to think about it, guys. Let's, let's, let's just kind of take a deep breath together. One, two, three. Deep breath. All right. So. Let's get out of the mode of being college students and let's get into mode of just being human beings. When you see something that you like and the first impression of it is good, it does make you want to continue, right? It makes you want to continue to explore what more is there to offer with whatever that thing is. Correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's just the way it is. So that's no different than how a person is analyzing you. If I think that you're, per if I go to your LinkedIn and I see a nice professional photo, I see a nice title, I see that you are gravitating my eyes towards who you are, what you represent, you know, what career aspirations you may have. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. Let's keep reading. What? What else, you know, what more do they have to offer? And this is a battle of time, guys. We're in a battle of attention. And what I mean by attention is I'm not trying to ask you to go out and <clears throat> get unnecessary attention. I'm saying <clears throat> when a person is trying to give you their attention, we want to capture it and hold on to it. And so if someone is researching you and trying to find out more about you, then you want to make sure that when they do so, that you capture their attention. So if you see my resume, I want you to be like, wow, okay, let me continue. Oh, wow, that's great. You know, oh, okay, let's give him a call. Let's, let's get an interview set up with him. That's the way you want is a, a person who is purposely seeking more about you, you want to ensure that you capture and keep their attention. All right. So this, um, if I can get a volunteer, I'd like for someone to read this for me. All right, Samantha, thank you. Okay. What is a brand? Personal branding describes the process by which individuals and entrepreneurs differentiate themselves and stand out from a crowd by identifying and articulating their unique value, value proposition whether professional or personal, and then leveraging it across platforms with a consistent message and image to achieve a specific goal. All right, so let's, let's look at a few keywords, and thank you so much, Samantha. Differentiate themselves. Isn't that what this is all about, guys? We're in a global competitive market. All of you here are trying to differentiate yourselves. You're trying to show your excellence in math or my excellence in science or I'm a strong writer or I'm great with research or I'm good with presenting. So when you're on your social media platforms, when you're looking at your resume, when you're um, presenting yourself in person, what differentiates you from somebody else? And I'm not saying that from just a, a competitive standpoint of being so competitive that you, you know, you lose friends and things, but truly you are trying to showcase, I may have something just a little bit different. So your uniqueness is okay to come to the forefront. So for me being a person who's worked in corporate America for many years, who also likes to write books, who also likes to write workshops, who also likes to do keynote speeches, it allows for me to kind of put that all into a nice little pot of jambalaya and present myself as something that's different than the norm. That's the way in which I present myself to the world as a differentiating factor. Now we turn around and we leverage that across multiple platforms. So I may have a LinkedIn, I may have a resume, I may have a website, I may have an Instagram. Have you heard, you haven't heard me say Snapchat and uh, all that other stuff, it's just too many at this point. So you go, <laughs> one tip for personal branding, pick, pick the platforms that you can actually use. <laughs> Don't try to use them all, because it'll drive you crazy. And it's hard to keep 
a whole lot of platforms updated and consistent. So uh, one thing that we did talk about uh, as we were preparing this for you is, you know, you may have a specific platform, guys, that is just your platform to have fun, right? Because I know on every single platform, you're not trying to be the button-up professional. Now, I do want you to be professional because there's no social media platform that could, uh, each one of them, I'll say, could get you in trouble. <laughs> so we do want to make sure we're, we're not too reckless, but it doesn't mean that one of your social media platforms or even two that you select are the ones that are, you know what, I'm just going to have some fun on these platforms. I just ask that no matter what you do, always be tasteful in what you do. Any thoughts on that? Samantha, you have your hand raised again. Oh, I apologize. I didn't know my hand was still up. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> any Anybody want to share any feedback on this? Any questions? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I um, was wondering how, how come it's called branding? Because I, I guess... I guess I don't, I guess I don't like the terminology because I don't want, I don't consider myself or any other person a commodity. Um, so I guess, what do you have to say to that? Okay, uh, well, you put me on the spot here. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, no, it's no problem. I'm a professional in what I do. So I'll say this, um, I agree with you to a certain, you know, I, I, I'll say this, I completely understand your point of view. That, and, I, and I hear that a lot from STEM students. Uh, why do I hear that a lot from STEM students? Is that we actually have a high population of introverts um, in, our, in our STEM population who aren't extremely comfortable promoting and talking about themselves. And so it does, you know, if you maybe go to the school of business uh, and you go to sales, it might be easy. Oh, great, brand. Absolutely, I'm a brand. I love it. Well, our students don't naturally have that mindset uh, because it's kind of not, it's not our thing, right? It wasn't my thing when I was in school. But what I learned about a brand was it wasn't that I was a commodity or that I'm trying to sell something. Um, it's more of, it's an identifier. So if we want to write that word down, if, you know, to try to get the, the, the sour taste of the word brand out of our mouths, then we just write the word identifier. Right. If McDonald's didn't have the the arcs, then how would you know to stop? If you were driving down the highway, we're we're looking for those yellow signs, right? If you didn't see that pepper, how would you know that was Chipotle? So we do need the appropriate identifiers for ourselves. I think that's level one of branding. The advanced levels of branding can get to the point of being promotive, you know, promotion, where you're promoting yourself. It can get to the point if you're an entrepreneur, you may be selling something. But at the core of a brand, it's just an identifier of who you are and what you represent. Does that, does that help? help yeah. you kind of digest it a little better yeah thank you no problem thank you for putting me on the spot <laughs> 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 no I, I but I do appreciate that question because you know not everyone is comfortable asking a challenging question like that um, and I'm pretty sure there's other people on the call is is there anyone else on the call that just when you hear personal brand and brand and everybody got their own brand does it kind of set you back a little bit when you just hear that? It does. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And, that, and that's not a surprise. And especially with this particular group of students, I'm not surprised. And that's why I'm happy that we had someone bold enough. What was your name? Christina. Christina, I'm proud that you spoke up. And what that says about your brand is that you're brave. It Thank says you. you're, you're a brave person and you, and you have a lot of confidence. Thank you. <laughs> and if you're put in a situation where you don't feel comfortable, then you're going to say something about it. You're a person I can trust. Now, did you hear all the key words that I just said about you? Can you repeat back some of those things that I just said about you?
Christina. Oh, sorry. I thought I was unmuted. Yeah. Um, trust, brave, confident. Um, I think that's it. Now, do you feel like those are um, a good representation of who you are? Um, yes, but I also am very inquisitive. So okay. you'll hear questions from me a lot. <laughs> well, and, that, and that makes sense because you were, you were open enough to ask the question. So that, yeah. that definitely makes, your, makes, that makes sense and it aligns with your brand. Now, look how we were able to identify four key aspects of who you are just by a quick little conversation we had. That's the power of a brand. That's mm -hmm. the power of, of being able to communicate who you are. And that's how we're analyzing people. When I interview people, I've interviewed so many people that when you are talking to me, I'm kind of interviewing you a little bit, even though we're just chatting here. And that's why I'm able to dissect those key traits that I see like, wow, Christina is somebody that I would want on my team. I can depend on her. All right. So let's, um, let's go to the next one here. So can I get someone, um, a volunteer uh, to read this one off? I can do it. Okay. Thank you. On average, every corporate job opening attracts 250 resumes, but only four to six of those people will be called in for an interview, and only one of those will be offered a job. And what does it say at the bottom? Differentiate yourself, sorry. I so talk to me. To so let's, 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 teach, let's teach amongst the group. You guys are educators. Talk to me about this. How does this make you feel? What does this mean to you? It makes you feel like you have to stand out more. Broadcast more of what makes you special. That is a fact. Anyone else? You can use the raise your hand feature if someone can speak up as well. Okay, Miss Monique. I guess to me, when I'm thinking of getting a job, I'm thinking, for one, they're looking for key points. Um, when they're looking for a specific job. So you want to outline those key points, but at the same time, you want to outline something that's different than what they normally look for in the job, if that makes sense. Like something that went above and beyond. You know, one thing that I was also thinking, uh, Monique, when you were saying that is, um, I teach, when I'm teaching resumes, I teach to have, uh, what I call your resume, which is like your life story. So I'm okay if this thing is 20 pages long, I really don't care. But then when we are submitting a resume or something or an application to something, I wanna see you tailor that specifically to what you are applying to. So if we know that the comp competition is this great, then we wanna make sure we provide a customized offer to the person. Make sense? Yes. Has anyone on the phone struggled with that before where you were you were just doing everything generic, you really didn't customize it? I'm sort of struggling with it now. I'm about to update my resume as we speak. And we were doing an assignment before this whole COVID madness in one of my classes where you had to do resumes. Uh -huh. And I noticed mine wasn't really special. It was just plain. Even though my achievements were all good, there was nothing that really drawed to the eye. Okay. And I, and I think that if you, as you customize it, it a good customized um, brand doesn't mean that um, it's the most exciting each time, but it can be the most uh, relevant to that specific uh, endeavor. Does that make sense what I'm saying there? Yes. You know, there may be a resume that you put together and you're like, wow, this is the one, right? This is awesome. Yeah, but is it what you are applying to? So make sure that there's gonna be times where there's certain things that you customize. I'm gonna be very transparent with you guys. When I apply for a job or something, I redo my LinkedIn right before. 
I make sure that everything about me is in alignment with what I'm pursuing. And then once that pursuit is over, I can go back to my default, my default LinkedIn. Anybody ever <laughs> been taught that concept before? A bit. Anybody okay. ever tried that one? Uh, no, I have not. Anyone else? I want to hear your voices. I haven't, but I'll definitely try that. Absolutely. I want you to. Because when I go there, I don't know if you had other items in your in your profiles before or your page. I'm. You got to remember when a person is in this search for you and they're looking to learn more about you, it's likely that's the first time they have ever uh, interacted with you, um, you know, through, through the computer. And so what they see is going to be what they see for the first time. So they don't even know if you had something before. So we don't have to overthink, we're not gonna overthink this thing and think, oh my gosh, they're gonna know I changed it. Who cares? Once they get on there, give them something beautiful to see. Okay. So let's do a pop quiz. Let's do a pop quiz. So there should be a chat feature. I'm sorry, a, um, a poll that comes up. Let's get some feedback from you tonight. What percent of admission officers check applicants social media profile? Everybody's going with the 63 right now. We got a high 63. Is this for like undergrad or grad or both? Oh, look at you being so inquisitive and specific. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll say in general, general. <laughs> All right, 36 is trying to, oh, 25 is making a comeback. Oh, 36. All right, so it looks like it looks like the majority of the group, about half of us tonight, we went with uh, 63%. Let's see what the answer is. This is gonna be a fun one. We got a nice distribution of answers. 36%. Wow, I was not <laughs> expecting that. We got a lot of, a lot of wows. Um, a lot of people got that one wrong. What do you guys think, think about that? So, you know, we gave the stat about 70% for, and that was just general employment. So, but now we're, we're getting specific into, into your world. What are your thoughts on that? Maybe get, let's get a hand raised uh, here. Okay, Nevin. Me? No, I think he means me. Oh, sorry. Yep, Appreciate I got it. Nevin. Um, yep. oh, sorry, my bad. I think uh, when, you're, when you're applying for a job, they're looking at you more of like a, as a person from a holistic approach and how you can interact with people. When you're in your undergraduate program or graduate, like you're not really, um, you're not really going there to meet people. You're here to study. So, I mean, they could probably care less about what type of person you are, as long as you're probably uh, staying in school <laughs> and uh, like getting good grades and writing grants. That's probably like the most important part to some schools. And, I, and I, I really like that feedback there, Nevin. Um, and I think that may be a big portion of why the statistics are different. Um, we, they are analyzing you from a different lens. Uh, but with that being said, though we're, it is different, uh, we always need to stay on, on point, right? Because 36% is still a healthy number. So there's a there's one in three chance that if you apply for graduate school or whatever type of application in the uh, admissions arena, there's one in three chance that someone's going to look at your social media, whatever that may be. And when we say someone looks at your social media, sometimes it's simple. It's as simple as I may type your your information in Google and see what it pops up. I think that's um, very important because. Sometimes we forget um, the high impact that social media has on us, and sometimes we forget to carry ourselves a certain way, um, especially when it's like personal social media, like Facebook and stuff like that, but that stuff's still public and can have an effect on you. And we're seeing a lot of that nowadays with everything going on. 
Yeah, and Monique, I, I, it's interesting you say that because I don't want you to be so afraid that you don't make jokes and things aren't funny and all that. I think what I would what I would caution you with um, is do everything with with good taste. Yeah. You can be hilarious. We can make jokes. I I'm not the <laughs> I'm not a comedian, but I try to you know get a laugh here and there, and I think I try to do it very tastefully. Uh, do at times I may use my social media to make a statement about something I believe in. Absolutely. But what I do understand about this is if I do such a thing, I have to be willing to stay, stick with that. And I have to be willing to allow someone to interpret that and, and get from it what they believe, even if it's not what I intended. You don't get, get control of how it lands once you put it into the atmosphere. Yeah. And I think like, coming, I'm a student athlete and they always like, they watch what we post kind of. And like, you see that because they want you to like represent the college in a good way. So you always have that, that they're like, kind of like watching what you put and stuff like that. So I kind of understand the social media part of like college and stuff from like a different perspective besides of admission and stuff like that. Absolutely. And, and, and I think it's a, it's a fine balance. Um, it's maybe a little bit of trial and error, but I think the, the number one thing that I would say to you is if in doubt, take the side of caution. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're like, ah, I don't know, maybe take the caution side over time. I think you will learn your, how much rope you have. Exactly, Over time, yeah. I think you learn that. And that just comes with a little trial and error. But also, like I said, I, I'm not here to tell you guys, you know, not to share your views or opinions, but just know that you don't control how they're interpreted. And that if you're if that's a stance that you're willing to take, then you need to stick with that because you're talking about remember, one of the things we said earlier about consistency. We don't want to be inconsistent about who we are and what we are. And, you know, one of the things that I'm wondering is, are we going to see a wave because of how much our presence is in, on the web? Do we start seeing people ask us interview questions based off of social medias? Now, I think there's some legalities around, you know, those type of things. But I'm wondering, like, will we transition one day to a world where I'm getting interviewed for something and they're bringing up something on social media? That's a, you know, typically they ask you based off your, what they see on your resume. But I think one day we might progress to, to where we start seeing things like that more and more often. All right. So good job on the pop quiz. Hopefully I didn't give anybody, um, I didn't scare anybody with the pop quiz. I know it's like, man, school's over, Brian. Give us a break here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why does your personal brand matter? Somebody, you know, let me, let me have one or two people just, just share with me a few things of why you think your personal brand matters. It's I like a represent, oh, sorry, I should have raised my hand. Oh, no, 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 you can uh, chime in. If anyone else like to, to go, uh, just raise your hand. No, no, please go. Okay, so it's like a representation of like who you are. So like your personality and kind of what you want to portray yourself as. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. It looks like we do have a hand raised with um, with Nevin. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the personal brand, like you said, is an identifier, and it's it's like a, a way for you to hold yourself to that standard. Um, mm -hmm. If you see yourself as that way, then uh, then you no doubt that you're going to keep trying to present yourself in that way. Wow, you made me write that down because we got a little bit about that later. Hold yourself to a standard. I think that is extremely powerful. Be who you say you are. Don't be on social media something that in person you're not. That's where that consistency comes in. So what a powerful, powerful uh, word there. So here are a few, a few things that I just wanted to share with you with 
you know, maybe for, for some lessons learned tonight of why does your personal brand matter? So let's just go through a few of these real quick. Speak speaks for you. So a lot of the time that a person is going to, to learn about your brand is not going to be through an interaction with you. Your brand has to speak for you because most of the time your brand is being analyzed by somebody that's never even talking to you. Uh, it promotes you. So if you're doing something well, it lets them know you're doing it. It validates you. A lot of times people may go onto social media just to ensure that you are who you say you are. And if you say you wrote a paper or about something, maybe I go to your LinkedIn and you have a link to it, right? So it can validate you. It shows credibility. It displays professionalism. It can project your creativity, uh, may show your influence and humanizes you. And I think that last one is very important. Many times we forget that we're human as it pertains to our professional presence. At the end of the day, a lot of work that we're gonna be doing for the rest of our lives has to do with our interaction with others. And so it's gonna be very critical that people think, man, can I work next to this person? Can I, would I enjoy being on the team with this person? And that is where the humanizing you really comes in. What are your thoughts on that, on that humanizing you? Is that, you know, you, you study a lot in STEM, you're doing your math, you're doing your science. And a lot of times we forget to tell you to be human in STEM. Share your thoughts on it. Uh, is there someone like to raise their hand and, and, and provide some feedback to that? Okay, I got uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, um, so about humanizing, I think that it's really important because another applicant might have the same qualities as you and be very similar, but if you can show a little bit of personality, that might be what gets you the job. Great point, absolutely. Um, it, it doesn't mean that it has to be a lot. It may just be like, wow, just a little of this person saying, hey, I'm respecting your technical expertise but also, I think it'll be pretty cool working on a team with you. Because we know moving forward throughout time, we're just, it's gonna be more and more team-based. Everything is just more and more about uh, working together as a unit. Anyone else like to share uh, their thoughts on, on that humanizing you as it pertains to your professional brand? I'm not sure, Nevin, were you raising your hand for feedback or from the last one? <laughs> I mean, I, I forgot to put it down, but I can still get <laughs> feedback on this. Okay. I definitely, I, I agree that it does humanize you. And um, sometimes uh, in the STEM field, we get so focused on, um, on like what research we can be doing and what other, what other things, uh, math and science related we can do, but also like what we can do for our community is also important because that will um, bring people to you and uh, yeah, it'll bring people to you. Absolutely. So one of the things I just wanted to put up here is comfortable is the best friend of success. And yes, we've, you know, we've made it to college. Uh, we may have made it to grad school. We may have made good grades. Um, those are wonderful things. But the reason that I have the person crossing the finish line is a lot of times we have that crossing the finish line moment when it's not over. We are always in the process of crafting and enhancing our brand. And I want you to remember that as you're on this journey, you go from undergrad to grad school, update your brand. Your brand, I go from master's to PhD, update your brand. It is a continuous cycle of continuing to to uh, update and modify and enhance that brand and over time yeah at the beginning of this you're like Brian I'm just a first year college student I'm great but six years from now I should see an enhancement in your brand and it just your brand kind of takes that journey with you it's okay not to to have this thing perfect from the beginning we're imperfect we're uh, imperfect beings and you're young. As you get older, your brand gets better and better. 
your your images get better, your your detail gets better. So it's okay if it's not crisp right now. Okay? Does that does that make anyone like relax a little bit with this? Because did anyone feel like, man, I got to do all this stuff. I got to update everything. I got to do all this stuff, and I have to be like the the perfect person. Share your thoughts with that. Did that just kind of relax you just a little bit? Yes, I, it, it kind of did because when we're looking at the stats and it's like 70% of employers watch your social media and stuff and I'm like, I've been applying for jobs and I've never even thought of doing that. So knowing about it, now I feel like more comfortable. I now know what to do and stuff. Okay. Because sometimes, guys, I've, I've heard students say, like, when I started talking about personal branding, it goes back to Christina's thought. They almost felt like I'm telling them to create a company. <laughs> they thought, like, oh, my gosh, it's like, I'm creating, I need to go get an LLC now. No, 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 no. It doesn't have to be that overwhelming. It doesn't have to be that complicated. It's basically, how are you identifying yourself? on your different platforms, on your resume, et cetera. Okay, so we talked about this and we'll move through this rather quickly on the credibility side. You want consistency and you want credibility. So all of your platforms, your resume, my on-site interview, you want a consistent, credible theme across them all. So let's talk about LinkedIn. Um, is there anybody that's like, Brian, I, you know what, I need a little push to get me to update my LinkedIn profile or to create a LinkedIn profile? Raise your hand if you don't have one or you know you need to kind of engage in it more updated. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wonder, maybe should have done a poll on this one, but um, we do a little basic math here, guys. We're in the 37-ish percent range, about 38% um, of us on this call either do not have a LinkedIn profile or need to enhance our LinkedIn profile. Interesting, huh? So I don't want you to be afraid of that. That's okay. Like, you'll, you'll be okay, and we'll get it updated in a timely manner. But I wanted to share these two numbers. 95% of recruiters use LinkedIn regularly, and 77% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find candidates. So it is a place that you want to be found on. The question is, when they find you, what do they see? So out of all your social media platforms, from a professional standpoint, this is absolutely one that you want to take some time, get it updated, you know, get some recommendations, use all the features that they provide you. You don't have to pay for any extra service or anything like that. Just get a nice, simple, basic profile. You don't have to try to get followers and, and build a brand to get followers and things like that. You just want, when I search for you there, that you are presenting yourself a good representation of who you are. Basically, LinkedIn is a chance to have a resume with a few more bells and whistles on it. Has anybody um, had any good experiences with LinkedIn? Has it benefited you uh, on LinkedIn? Any hands raised for that? You'd like to share with others? I see three hands raised. I wasn't sure if it was from the, the other one. So I'll go with Tiara if you wanted to share. Yeah, nope. I, don't, yeah I don't have a, a LinkedIn account. Okay, well, we're going to get one. Angelica, you want to share? Yeah, so typically we always tend to use our LinkedIn when we have conferences. So I feel like it's always a really good thing to kind of put out there. And it kind of helps you. It, it almost is like a podium, I guess you could say, like whenever you're like public speaking, like it's kind of like a safety net because it kind of helps put yourself out there and then everybody kind of talks about their LinkedIn and comes together and it 
and for, after like meeting those people and connecting with them it leads you to more connections so then you have like possible jobs that you could look for in the future or possible connections that could help get you where you want to be later on absolutely that's great feedback too um i'll do one more ala would you like to share as well yeah um i did create one like last year but i don't really use it that much i use like instagram more but i feel like it's a good way to share um like like she said conferences visit and stuff like that it's kind of cool uh, but I'm trying to learn more about it. Like I shared it in my account and then I shared some stuff about me. But I will continue doing that. I feel like it's kind of helpful. Absolutely. And you don't have to you don't have to use LinkedIn, right? You don't have to go on there and read all the articles. You don't have to post anything. You don't have to do any of that. At the core, remember, look at LinkedIn as your resume. I just want to update it. Right, that's it, I just wanna update it. So if you look at how LinkedIn lays out, it actually just lays out your resume. LinkedIn is nothing more than your resume just in a fancier form. That's it. So once you get it, once you get your profile updated, you don't have to be there every day. Like with Instagram, you may wanna just join into that every day. LinkedIn, once you get a good profile created, you don't have to. If you want to, yes. But all I want you to do is have a good structure in place that when someone goes and they see you, they see the consistency and it aligns with your resume. All right. So let's move Just on. Just a sec. <laughs> someone, Siri. <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to share with you here was tell your story. So this is on my LinkedIn. This is my family. Um, and the reason that I have these images up there is, uh, I'll, I'll maybe use this as, a, as an example. Can someone uh, raise their hand and share with me that if you were to click on my LinkedIn, what do you think these images represent about my brand? All right. Um, Aaron? Is that Isabel? Yes. Okay. What do you think that Can you represents? Guys hear me? Yeah. What does that represent to you? Um, that you're like family oriented. Okay. One more. Let's go with. Um, is that a Samantha there? Or Natalie? Yeah, I know. At the beginning, they said welcoming, and I think the three pictures like enhances that part of. Um, your page okay so let's look at what i what i was trying to convey what i was trying to convey when i put these images on my linkedin was family professional business i look like i'm a guy that might be in business doing something i look like i might have a job <laughs> i look like a professional i guess and i and it looks as if my family matters and all of those and i say it looks as if because I'm trying to project that and I'm hoping that that's how you receive it. So it has to be, you know, I'm, it's a hope, right? And, but all I can do is put my best foot forward. And so it looks that the feedback you guys are given is consistent with what I was trying to offer. And so when you're, when you're on your social medias, that's how imaging, I just wanted to share from a brand standpoint, how the imaging can help, um, help your brand as well. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is over the summer, just real briefly, if you guys want to, to write these down, you can. Uh, this presentation will be provided to you, but uh, LinkedIn, website, business cards, social media platforms, and your presence. I want you really to be working on this over the summer. Work on these things. Websites don't cost as much money as you believe. We may not have the money, and I understand, but there are some very unique ways uh, to get websites done in a cheap way. Um, business cards are not as expensive as you think. They're not as prominent as they used to be. Uh, update your social media platforms and then also be prepared to, to make the in-person experience with you better. So your elevator pitch, your professionalism, your attire, your, um, your, your, uh, your speaking ability, et cetera. Just 
work on that personal one-on-one -on -one experience. Those are things that, yes, we got COVID-19 happening over summer, but those are things that we could do to enhance our brand during this time. Do you guys feel confident that you can, that we can work on some of this over the summer? Absolutely. Yeah. And I yeah, promise you, you there's, a, there's a return on investment for that effort that you'll make. Yeah. And then here are a few tools. I think Deb is going to put a few of these links. Uh, they're, they may be inside your chat feature. If not, they'll, um, we'll have these as part of the presentation. But here's just a few resources, like great that, that I was able to, to share a few things with you tonight. But here's some other websites and things that can share some branding tips uh, for you to go and, and reference some other learning as well. Uh, Ezekiel, you have your hand raised. Would you like to share something? Yeah, um, I had a question about the business card. So okay. should we have a business card even if we don't have a business? And if so, specifically what information needs to be included on there to portray ourselves in the best way possible? Yeah, if I'm, if I'm a college student, then I, if I'm having a business card, um, it may have my name, um, what my field of study is. Um, it may have my expected graduation date, so they kind of know when I'm available for certain things. Um, and uh, how to get in contact with me, an email address or a phone number. And leave it at that. Um, if you're allowed to use your university's um, logo or something like that, that's great. And just that, that simple. Any, any other feedback on that? Anybody want to share their thoughts on the business card? Um, I never thought to use business cards, but I feel like it's a really good idea now that I think about it. I'm glad that that idea was brought up. Absolutely. I, I, I know that I, I'm getting to the point in business where I don't like to receive them all the time. But the one place I really love to receive a business card, and this uh, sometimes a business card isn't about just reading it. And it sometimes it's just, it, it sends off, uh, it's like a vibe. You know, I think that's what you guys, you guys say a vibe. Is that what's, is that, yeah. <laughs> it's a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not so out of touch. I'm not out of touch. <laughs> it's a vibe. And, but it, in all seriousness, it's a vibe. It's like, wow, this is a professional. It's just, it, you, you're sending a good energy out there. Uh, it's not if the, how fancy the card is. It's, it's just a, sometimes it's a good representation of you. That's all. Okay. Um, and websites. Does anybody know um, any cheap or free website creation type of options for people? And I, I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, I know Deb doesn't like to say much here, but we had an example, I want to say three or four years ago, guys. Deb and I were on a call. And we had a student that heard me talk about websites. That student created her website before the annual conference. And I believe she got into either, was it Stanford or UCLA? Stanford. And Stanford. She got into uh, grad school at Stanford and she had talked about how, you know, enhancing her professional brand and presence uh, helped her with that process. Um, and within a matter of a week or so after our session, she created her own website. And if you have a website, all it is is like who you are, what you're studying, what your interests are. And that's, that's all it has to be. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. She may have had a picture of her and her dog or something like that. And um, she wanted to be a future scientist or uh, get her PhD in X, Y, Z. So it's just, you don't have, your website doesn't have to be like you're trying to sell something. It's just a good, more, it's another creative way to represent yourself. And it's a lot more affordable these days than it used to be. So just a few key takeaways. So uh, seven seconds to make a first impression, uh, be credible, live the brand you promote, tell your story, create, update your LinkedIn profile, display professionalism, professionalism and consistency, have some fun with your brand. So I hope, I hope that, you know, what we shared tonight was beneficial to you. Uh, I hope that, um, you know, as we look at some of these reflective, uh, reflection questions, 
Uh, do you see yourself as a personal brand? I really want you guys to take these questions and do some dissecting over the summer, do some reflection um, and, and make, you know, try to truly answer these four questions. And I think if you answer them and action them, uh, you're definitely going to enhance your brand. Uh, what does your current public brand say about you? And does your current online presence reflect your intended brand message? And how can you improve your personal brand over the summer? So if there's any feedback, um, I'd like to hear from you, but um, here's my contact information. I know a few of you have connected with me on social media. Uh, please do so. I like to use LinkedIn and Instagram mostly, um, but please connect with me. And I would like to hear some feedback uh, from you guys on tonight's session. Uh, I have a question on the question, the question uh -huh. questions. What do you mean by the first question? Um, so I think it goes back to what Christina was asking us earlier about just that brand question. Um, I think you don't, you won't enhance your brand until you truly see yourself as a personal brand. And I think that's just a, it's a hurdle. It's a question, but it's also me asking you to jump over a hurdle because once you see yourself as a personal brand, I think it opens the door for you to really engage with questions to do two through four. Okay, got it. Thank you. Does that, did that question help? Did the question and the answer help kind of navigate through the other questions on the reflection questions as well? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so I did want to say we do, we're back guys. Um, well, first let's give credit to our collaborators. Um, they have done a really good job of, of trying to build uh, some structure over the summer uh, to help us come together and learn together. So I'm very grateful uh, to be a part of this. Uh, we also, next week, um, we have our Career Pathways panel. And then, um, you know, PhD, why not me, finding graduate school. So we have some more um, specific topics for you over the coming weeks. We hope that you join us 